Welcome, welcome everybody. <laughs> it's a great pleasure for me to in the moderate today the webinar about photonics for steel manufacturing and processing. My name is Francesca Moglia. I am the laser expert in EPIC, and I'm really looking forward to really motivate and uh, animate some new synergies between two initiatives that are dealing with the steel manufacturing and processing, and the namely are multiple and LAMPAS. And uh, it's, uh, let's say, it's the, the program is really easy. We will have to, huh, no. Uh, this is the agenda. We will start with a couple of words for myself about EPIC first, uh, then a couple of words about the projects themselves, but then we will dive into the two experiences that we have with multiple and LAMPAS. So we will have two speakers, Pavel, uh, so Inazzo Fachado first from LDL as a, our end user in multiple. Then we will have Pavel Kulczynski from Eroptic as a, also supporter of this use case in multiple. Then we will move in lab to LAMPAS and we will talk about all the monitoring systems mostly. So that's why we want to bring uh, the connection to the multiple, to the LAMPAS. You will hear later why. And uh, we will have Nikolai Schroeder first and then Rodrigo Linares. We will conclude then with uh, some uh, closing words, but also some networking. So if you are interested to talk to our speakers and also to ask more questions, you are very welcome to stay online and also have a chit chat offline. So we will then be uh, not anymore visible to everybody. <laughs> so now just to give a couple of words about Epic. So Epic is easy, this slide, it's them. <laughs> it's also the little uh, logos you see behind me. So we are uh, uh, the largest photonics industry association in the world. And these are uh, all the members that we have at the moment. And it's really growing fast. Uh, as you see here, bottom uh, right, we have uh, above 700 members. And basically what is the idea behind EPIC is to promote the sustainable development of the organization that are working in photonics on the world level, but of course with a pain and attention, a little eye on Europe. And also we are supporting the technology and commercial advancement of this uh, technology and these companies. So for you that are listening, probably it's uh, trivial to know and to understand what is photonics. There are really a lot of uh, um, uh, topics in this. So including lasers, optics, imaging systems, sensors, uh, photonics integrated circuits, all in the possible applications of industrial, medical, research, defense, everything that you see here, and probably we forgot some, uh, are uh, those that um, uh, are covering the full photonics world. Then basically the little heads <laughs> on the bottom is the team. So uh, we are 13 at the moment, and we are all taking care of, um, of, the, of all these members and that the photonics really is uh, improving and getting more successful and more visibility also among other technologies. So that's why here I reported a bit of our activity. We publish market and technology reports. We organize technology workshop and B2B roundtables to really bring together uh, possible and potential partners for future collaborations to really foster uh, activities together, not only in the photonics world, but also with system integrators and, and end users. Then we have a lot of uh, initiatives. Also, we coordinate CU funding proposals. We, have, uh, we are lobbying for more uh, also financement from the European Commission towards photonics and all these activities that are also present on our website. So you are very free to, to join us and, and see what is really EPIC doing for, for the photonics community. And then it's time maybe now to spend a couple of words about the two initiatives that we have here today, Multiple and LAMPAS. So I start with Multiple that represents the future of photonics-based process optimization. This is uh, basically uh, what are, we are now planning to offer. We are halfway of our project. And the idea is to really provide cost-effective multimodal monitoring solutions. We have a full solution that will be really monitoring and optimizing the manufacturing chains in different um, industrial fields. And then we have five building blocks products that basically can be flexibly um, combined to each other and also used for different applications. For example, we have snapshot vis uh, visible and sphere hyperspectral imaging cameras, laser-based IR analyzers that you will, we will hear our partner today about it, uh, organic electronics-based spectrometers, multimodal monitoring systems, and cloud and edge computing platform and services. So this is uh, uh, the three areas that we are actually um, now facing as use cases in the project. It's clear that today, considering the topic, we will focus on steel manufacturing. And for woodworking and food industry, you're, of course, very welcome to uh, join us and check our website and also connecting to us. And these are the other partners, including those that are here today. And so we will hear more about more the focus on steel processing in a bit. First, I have to talk spend two other words about LAMPAS. So LAMPAS is there for uh, 
basically giving us the possibility of surface enhancement inspired by nature. Because basically we realize that if you inspire it by nature, so you can see that uh, if, you ca if we can control the topographic characteristic of the surfaces, we can really give special functionalities to surfaces. And this can be antibacterial, self-cleaning properties, friction reduction, optical security function, or even decorative effects. And this is possible usually with coatings or with sand, extra chemical um, uh, um, components that we can add to surfaces, but also with lasers. And this is possible only with special lasers, so with the ultra short pulse lasers actually, that uh, can reach the really generate these multi scale topographies on the surfaces that play the game of giving these um, uh, characteristics to the surfaces. The problem is, this is possible, yes, in, in research labs, but is really not yet uh, suitable for mass production and low cost, and especially high throughput. So that is what now Lampas is trying to do with this basically six pillars of activities. So as I said, we need a high power ultra short pulse laser, but uh, what is actually the, the key role is interference patterning. That is what we are planning with our ultra fast laser and also fast polygon scanners. But nothing of this would happen without the monitoring control. And so that's why today we will focus a bit more on how to monitor in processes so that we have the link with multiple. Now you are starting to build the, the puzzle pieces together, I assume. And then we will integrate everything in a, in, a, in a device, so in a big machine, a system design from our partner, Lazea. And then we will be able to use it also for different applications. But for this, maybe we will take talk about it in another uh, uh, webinar soon. We focus today more on process control. These are the partners that are working with us together with the, the two that are in the room today. This is also the way to reach us, but please keep in mind, you can also reach myself. You see my email address there for any questions we have also after this, um, we can basically reach me and I will redirect you and inform you about what is useful for you and what the multiple or Lampas can do for you. So now I don't steal more time to our speakers. We start to, with the Nazio Fashado from LDL. And uh, I guess I stop share my screen so that you can share yours because the floor now in Nazio is yours. You are muted. That's a standard. <laughs> no, you are still muted. Now. Yes, now. Now, right. very well. <laughs> no Good problem. Afternoon. Good yeah. afternoon, everybody. I will introduce our Lamin Radeland company. Okay. Lamin Radeland is uh is the is let me here sorry i cannot find out sorry. with the space bar you can change ah, now yeah. okay yeah, yeah. Right. perfect okay. <laughs> sorry about let me know the land ldl key data we are the latest european rolling mill is a greenfield project in Tarnot, france we start operations in first quarter of 2018 with the production of heavy plates. We have a capacity of about half a million tons. We have 20,000 square meters in a 10, 10 hectares. Okay. We are based in Tarnos, it's a small town based at the port of Bayonne in France, in, in, in the Bay of Biscay. Okay. What we do, uh, La Minoir de Land manufactures heavy plates of reliable tested quality. Uh, our target is to offer the highest quality steel, thermomechanically controlled, roll fine grain steels, high tensile heat treated, fine grain steels, and wear resistant steels. Uh, we need to make the difference, or we try to make the difference going to the to the highest quality. So the market is good. Is focus on normalized fine grain steels, obviously certified to the to the highest European standard ASTM, ASME, etc. We are now also approaching a steel for on and offshore structure, the wind farms. We start now doing also 
place for shipbuilding and in the future we will be able to to make place grip resistant steel for pressure vessels okay uh, the project was based in two of our main services of the plant in in, in the finance and the rolling cage you see the we are in the plant our furnace and the rolling cage our furnace is a pusher type reheating furnace with a capacity of 80 ton per hour working in three row or slab with a maximum length being more of three meters each uh, is complete of a large charging device again pusher type and the sharing system with independent trolleys we can put slabs of a thickness between two and 300 millimeters wide from 1850 to, to 2500 and about 30 tons maximum weight the rolling temperature that this furnace has to reach the slab is 1200 degrees okay uh, we roll in a quarter type rolling mill so we have four rolls two two backup rolls and two wall rolls the back rolls they are 1600 millimeters diameter and the wall rolls 950 the big ones weighs about 63 tons and the the wall rolls 23 tons we have two electric motors giving 6,000 horsepower and producing a separate for 4,000 tons. We have all control and the thickness, thickness adjusting seat bend by hydraulic skid down with automotive control, okay, which is AHC. So what? Uh, what is the, the, the steel place secret is the combination of forces, temperature and time. Okay. The, 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 the objective is to reach quality plus N and plus N. That means plus N is we call normalized roll is the, the process which the final deformation is carry out within a specific temperature range the result is equivalent to normalization normalization through heat treat through heat treatment in furnace in this case the rolling temperature is always about the transformation temperature and we have also the objective to produce plus m is called thermomechanical rolling. That means that the final deformation is carried out within a special temperature range in order to achieve a steel with a special characteristic that they are not possible to obtain with a simple heat treatment. The result is very high quality steel, fine grain microstructure with similar offer good strength and cold forming properties. This can also be combined with a process with increased cooling speed as accelerate cooling process, okay? So uh, now we are entering now in, in, the, in the multiple process, okay? What we have done in, in the furnace, we have implemented air topic gas analyzers. These gas analysis will allow us to control the gas from areas within oven. We have five areas and we are allowed to much better control the, 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 the working of the, of the furnace. We will reduce the delays due to lower temperature sometimes when we start the rolling in the, in the beginning of the 
the the ship despite the the system tell us that we have the temperature we start the first slab and we see when we start rolling that it's not it didn't reach the proper temperature so that will allow to to reduce this these delays at the beginning of the shift uh, this gas analysis will also allow to secure the regulation of the of the furnace secure the the combustion and reducing the the co2 and, and nox okay another benefit that we will be able to control the the temperature and then we can secure the, the that the the plate is getting the right properties okay so that will allow us to better improve the the quality we will reduce the gas consumption so that it's important for us because average we can spend about 200,000 euros per month in gas so it's important for us and this will allow also to reduce the as as consequence of all the earlier inputs we will reduce the the production of the slack so that the slack is still that we will not be able to to sell as a plate so it's it's a loose so the less slack we will make the better will be okay and finally in the rolling cage we have is installed 3d cameras at the entry of and the exit of the rolling cage that will allow to us to better control the the thickness and also the the steel the steel grade so this way we will avoid that some slabs are load by mistake and this uh this is another checking point well that will help so, so the benefit of this of these cameras will be that we will have more reliability when controlling the the temperature nowadays we have some tempo sonic but it's always about to how to calibrate the, the tempo tempo sonic are always checking we have to to check very often if the the, the tempo sonic work properly or not so with this way with the cameras that will have to see if the the tempo sonic are right or not okay we have also installed per kilometer after the level again will be will help us to control i mean to measure the thickness of the the plate i mean the whenever we we have to calculate from the slab to the plate is there are the programmation is always focus on to match the 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 the, the norm tolerances but also with the objective to to use less slab as possible so but it might happen that the calculations are wrong and we don't reach to the to the thickness tolerance so so the more we control it the better it will be for us and also another benefit of this per kilometer that will allow to automatize the process because nowadays we are controlling the thickness by hand um, we will abide this hand control and we allow also to 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 better control the grade of the of the plates so so basically it's all about the process and we are very very confident that now we are in the process to to activate all the the data collecting and we will respect to 
to reach the the target okay so for me it's okay if you have any question you know where we are we can talk bit later okay thank you very much for your Attention. Thank you very much, Inazio. Thanks Thank a lot. <laughs> so, yes, so thanks a lot for this introduction to your company and also what uh, Multiple is doing for you. Um, maybe I, I know already here in the room there are some people interested also on the camera side of, of, the, of the devices that we are uh, implementing for you. Uh, for the um, uh, gas sensing, we will hear uh, Pavel right after you, so maybe we don't go into details there. But maybe consider, Inazio, that I wanted to bring you closer to the epic world and to the epic events. I will ask you now a question that is the so-called epic question. <laughs> that is, is uh, what can you do for them and what can they do for you? In this case, of course, you presented already what LDL is doing, but maybe you can give us a, another couple of hints on how photonics could help you. That is a part of this, of course, um, uh, devices that you discussed already. Is there something in other also stages of the manufacturing that uh, you think that you are interested to talk uh, with the photonics companies? Anything that comes to your mind? <laughs> Basically, I will say again, just I mean, for us, we, we see big potential for both the, 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 the machine itself and then the, the process and the, and the final product. So mm -hmm. it's a combination. So the, the, the more control we have on the, on the, on the, on the, the way the, the furnace is working that will benefits in the process and mm -hmm. in the in the in the final product quality so it's a combination okay. of also of all, okay so also a bit of automation also it could be it could improve also yes. the the use of uh, of the of the of some uh, processes that's very interesting yeah so the idea is that uh, um we want always so epic is really interested in knowing what the what the potential end user uh, are interested in for for photonic side so definitely uh, it's uh, we have to keep you in mind and to engage yes. with you more eh? <laughs> because okay. that is uh, what really is uh, is important for us to understand also what uh, you don't think yet it is possible but maybe it's already possible and, right, work right, yeah. <laughs> and working with you it just helps and so yeah Thank so you. if there are no further questions we sure what three to one i don't see anything um further so we can move on to the second speaker that will explain a bit more the part of the laser-based um uh, gas sensing so it's a big pleasure to have today uh, pavel kluczynski from air optic and so now pavel the floor is yours okay hello everybody i hope you can hear me Yes, we can hear you and we see perfectly. <laughs> Thank you very much, Francesca. So, uh, yes, yeah, so my name is Paweł Kruczyński. I'm the CEO of Eroptic. And today I will talk about application of laser-based analysis in steel industry. So I will try to maybe present more from the actually analyzer side rather than application, because you already <laughs> presented uh, the, 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 what is the goal uh, for, for usage of the gas analysis. Uh, so, First of all, some brief information about our company. So we are a small medium enterprise based in Poznan, in Poland. And we manufacture laser-based gas analysis for various industrial applications. So steel industry is something which we actually started very recently, uh, but uh, we mainly focus on the applications in industries where traditional gas measurement is, is difficult because say of high temperature or or difficult conditions, or where, for example, the high uh, fast response times is, uh, is very necessary, as well as low maintenance. And so we mainly work with power industry, petrochemical industry, chemical industry, wood industry, and as I mentioned, also steel. Uh, we have in-house technology and R&D department on, on site, so we can also make a customized uh, solutions for, for customers if there is a special request. Uh, we mainly uh, work on as an export, 90% uh, of total revenues uh, accounts for export and 10% uh, for internal market. And uh, so we have uh, different kinds of gas analysis. They're all based on laser technology. Today, I will only talk about so-called in-situ analysis of the ones which are used uh, 
basically directly on the process, so without any sample conditioning. But just to mention, we have also open path analyzers, so we use laser technology to measure on the around the fence, uh, so we can measure, say, the leakages from different uh, you know industries on the up to one kilometer distance. And finally, the extractive analyzers, more like traditional type, uh, where the sample is extracted from the say pipeline with some sample conditioning system, and then the anal analysis is done internally in the analyzer. It's more like gas chromatograph, but it's based on laser technology. But it's a bit outside of the scope, so let me continue. So uh, if it uh, comes to the in-situ analysis, as I mentioned, you, the systems are relatively easy mounted on the process. Uh, it can be a chimney, it can be a furnace, it can be uh, any pipeline. And then uh, you do it with different kind of flanges. So in Europe, we have the 50 flanges, but we have also ANSI standards, say, for, for, for American market and also GIS for, 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 for Asia. And that's uh, basically just a matter of configuration. But the idea is that you measure directly in the process. So you have a very fast response time to whatever happens to the flue gas or the gas you, you measure. And that's why we can have different applications uh, for control. So basically process control of, uh, of different, uh, different uh, industrial processes, typically combustion control. It can be also safety application, like you basically monitor some process uh, and monitor some gas, which is critical to the process, like carbon monoxide and oxygen. Uh, the oldest application was actually STR, so selective catalytic reduction, so the denitrification process in the power plant. And, uh, and but there are many, many different applications, yes. So that's, uh, and in the sealed industry also try to use our systems already. And now what we do in multiple, uh, it's more, very, say, advanced type of uh, application you want to uh, uh, obtain. So the principle of operation, the physics is very simple. So this is based on the absorption technology. The system combines, this consists of two, two uh, units. It's a transmitter unit which sends the light from one side of the process to the other. So shining light exactly through the process. And then what we do is we measure the absorption of the gas. So the, the gas acts like a filter basically, which selectively reduces the, the, the light intensity after passing through the process. So that's, that's in principle very simple physics, but the, 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 the difficulty practical conditions are that normally you don't only have the gas of interest. You have also a lot of dust. For example, if you burn coal in the, uh, cold fire power plant, there's a lot of dust which scatters light more and actually the molecules absorb. So that the, but the anal analysis is capable of distinguishing between one and the other. So it's very selective and very sensitive. So absorbances up to down to 10 to minus seven in relative units. So compared to FTIR, this is already three factor, three orders of magnitude. So one of the typical examples of the application is combustion control. So in the in the beginning, we only use the oxygen system. So we are measuring oxygen in basically directly in the boiler above the fire uh, place to optimize, try to optimize the combustion process in real time by uh, using our signal. And then we also added carbon monoxide analyzers so you can actually try to optimize combustion a little bit closer. And that's what's typically used in the boilers. So not in the steel plants, but say it's a bit lower temperatures, say in the power plants or in some chemical processes, and anywhere you have a combustion. And it's seemed to be already well proven technology and accepted. So the, 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 the drawback of the, the EC2 lasers are that they are basically very, uh, very selective, but uh, you need basically one analyzer for one gas. So what we did in 2018, we released a model which combines two lasers into one analyzer. So the form factor is basically the same, but you are measuring both carbon monoxide and oxygen and water in one analyzer. And this has already been proven in say smaller stacks and for combustion optimization in smaller boilers, I'm sorry. And also in some power plants. And then what we try to do is to, to we ask ourselves the question, can we use it also for, for different processes like uh, steel industry? And that's uh, what we did also a couple of years back, but for the a little bit simpler case when we had a hot rolling meal and optimized the, the, the furnace conditions by either me measuring the oxygen or, uh, or carbon monoxide or both. And the only difference with the, the boiler was that the, here the temperatures were, were up to 1350 degrees, 
But so the conditions were slightly more difficult, but it's also proved that this technology can be applied to the steel, steel industry. And uh, there, they, there are some technical uh, issues here that we have to add some additional cooling uh, devices if the, if the ambient temperature is above plus 55 degrees. But nevertheless, it, it proved to be working fine. Uh, so the next step was so that except for combustion control, can we use something else? Uh, can we use some other type of optimization? So what we did is also we uh, had the installation for the optimizing of the fuel, I'll say the measurement of the fuel composition of the gas which feeds the, the furnaces. And that was done also, uh, for example, in the case when the, the, the gas used for the reheating furnace is, uh, is mixing uh, different type of gases available in the plant. And these, these components can be changing in time. So the customer wanted to have a, uh, the knowledge of the real time composition of, of the gases. And uh, we deployed two analyzers, uh, one measuring methane, ethylene, and water vapor, and the other carbon monoxide, CO2, and H2S. So basically, this was enough for customer to eradicate some additional knowledge in real time about the, the gas uh, feeding the furnace. And now, uh, finally, the, the, what we try to do in, the, in multiple projects, so together with LDL and Ursula and IMEN, is to have a very advanced uh, analysis of what's going on in the, in the heating furnace. So as Ignacio already showed, with the, it's the, there is a plan to deploy uh, analyzers in three different points, as well as not only measure the carbon monoxide and oxygen, but also extend it to temperature, water vapor, and CO2. And also NOx, it's not shown on the graph, but basically to have a very complex analysis in the real time of, of the gas composition. And by means uh, of this, we hope to, to, to uh, save the energy uh, basically by optimizing the combustion process really close and more precise, but also to reduce the waste in form of uh, basically some waste material that is what also Ignacio mentioned in his presentation that if the combustion is not sufficient or in the conditions in the furnace are not optimal then, then the it produces waste. So uh, that's already um, the project has basically started recently so now uh, the, the, the systems are our systems are installed at the LDL and I hope the first results can be expected, I think, in the September already. And so we are all very curious how, how it will all work and in the closed loop system, because the idea is also to use our uh, outputs of the gas concentration in the edge computing device. That's a, the whole idea about the multiple. And also, I hope with combination with the camera information to have a more profound uh, control of the, of the, the furnace condition. So this is a, a really something new which never had been, been tried before. So we are all very excited. But from our, our uh, part, from the just analyzer part, we think that uh, just to summarize, uh, basically in situ technology as such can provide really fast response times because this was already proven and which in general can be used in the fast uh, closed loop control because basically most of our clients use the, our analyzer in the fast loop control. So this is really something really standard in the power plant today. And also the temperatures, there is basically no limit of the high temperature for the spectroscopy. And then uh, inherent, basically the, because we use laser, it's very selective and sensitive. So it's not like the non-dispersive techniques. And last but not least, uh, these analyzers are also made that we have 24 seven operation. They have a self calibration feature which basically gives you a low maintenance, low cost of ownership in the end. And uh, mechanically, they're also you know, pre pre suitable for this type of environment. And we also have a possibility to deploy them in the hazardous areas if necessary, uh, for example, for zone one or even zone zero. So basically this concludes my talk and I'll be happy to take any questions.
Thanks a lot, Pavel. Thanks a lot also for highlighting a bit, yeah, the specialty of, uh, of uh, multiple and also especially your role, of course, in this. Um, I have to say, um, the important thing that is multiple doing a part of this adaptability to different situations, to different uh, uh, manufacturing uh, conditions, is also the broad spectrum of that we are covering. So we can go from visible to mid IR. And actually, you are the mid IR person in multiple. So for us, in EPIC is really important because we are now um, started an adventure with the Mid-IR Alliance and uh, so it's a, basically an initiative to push a bit more um, the Mid-IR uh, technologies and here in the room we have also Rodrigo that later will talk about this uh, uh, wavelength range so today is also a bit the long wavelength meeting <laughs> so maybe Pavel you can tell us a bit what is uh, your experiences because of course you are an integrator of Mid-IR technology since uh, you started basically because that's uh, of course a range of high interest and so you can maybe give us a hint on what is are the challenges now also as you for you as integrator of these technologies that uh, you think that could be faced to even improve of course for um, uh, your technology for uh, for uh, steel processing but also who knows also for other application and in gas sensing anyway yes yeah, so definitely so francesca of course the, the, the paramount uh, the, the goal is uh, to be able to combine mid infrared technology and uh, with near infrared technology. So basically, to create a wide, wide uh, broadband uh, coverage, because broadband coverage gives you a possibility to measure several components at the same time. This is something which ev everybody needs in any industry, because uh, you know we need more tight control. So it's, the more parameter you control, the more gases you, you measure. In our case. And uh, it's, 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 it's an added value. So, of course, the challenge is to be able to combine, you know, the wide wavelength ranges with the available photonics, you know, the devices today. Yes, so that's uh, very good to, for us to know because uh, the idea is if you have some something specific, of course, this is uh, something we want to work with you as well as uh, for, for really direct bullet points where we can uh, really improve this and uh, and get in, in an advanced situation to also for the mid-IR technology. So that's very good to know. Be aware that we are <laughs> working on this and uh, we are always keen on, on uh, improvements on this, in this direction. So now we have two questions. So I would start first with Thierry from Lambda X. Uh, I don't know if you can speak up yourself. Maybe you, if you, I guess you should be able to um, to talk. Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. So you, write a, you wrote a question in the chat, but please uh, feel free to ask yourself the question. Okay. So, um, yeah, um, I am... Uh, it seems that um, gas uh, composition uh, control and measurement is a, a technique of choice to uh, control the, the process for steel manufacturing. But um, I was wondering, it's, it's rather an indirect control. Uh, maybe it's quite direct if you want to monitor your combustion uh, gases and uh, control your, 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 yes, your gas expenses. But for uh, steel quality, uh, we have uh, worked at Lambda X on a, a technique which enables to make a, a direct measurement of the steel by optical emission spectroscopy. And I was wondering whether uh, maybe uh, for LDL, uh, this technique would be uh, interesting for them to monitor the composition of their steel, measuring elements by using this technique. Yeah, Ignacio. That's a, a, a direct offer. <laughs> what do you say? You, you are muted now? <laughs> Wait a second. We are muted. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, good afternoon, Terry. Yeah, of course, we will be we, we will be happy learning how it works your process. And because I said, the more we control uh, and do the, the preventive, the less waste and the less money we spend them somewhere else so no no we'll be happy to learn more so we can keep the dialogue next next day whenever you want okay the only uh, the only uh, limitation is you might need uh, you, you need to uh, sample uh, your steel for that but um, uh, which means you can take uh, you need to take a, a small sample on the line and then you get the, the, the results in some seconds, maximum one minute. So it's not a, 
it, it will not be a real time uh, measurement, but, 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 but it will be direct. So I don't know if it is uh, meaningful for your process to do that. I mean, the process, I see that difficult because you know, the, we are working at the goal in the slab at 1,200 degrees. And nowadays we don't have, we don't know how to do it. Maybe okay. you can, you can, you will have the techniques to. Oh, no, no, no. The sample, so. <laughs> No, um, we, we don't we, know. I'm afraid. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, thank you. Yes, no, we don't have any uh, technique to 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 extract uh, piece uh, part uh, just to do this um, uh, control of the material. Uh, but we 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 have been uh, involved in a development to to do the optics part. I mean, to design a spectrometer that was able to extract uh, the composite the elements in the in the steel by optical means. Yeah, but then, you know, the point, we have here two, two people now that would like to work together. You miss maybe one in between that can support you and maybe Epic can help you in this. So let's keep this opportunity in mind. And then offline, we can also see if we can see a way to, to bring Thierry to, to LDL. <laughs> okay? <Perfect. Very laughs> and this is my plan also on my, <laughs> on my shoulder. So now that we have also another question from Frank. You have raised your hand. Please, you can feel free to speak. Frank, do you hear us? You have your raised hand, but I see you're still unmuted. <laughs> I can give you another three seconds. Unfortunately, let me check if I can unmute you. <laughs> mm, yeah, no. <laughs> Yes, but I, it's not, I'm not strong enough. So <laughs> in case you try later, now. Okay, now, now it works. Yes, now yes. It works. yes. Yeah. okay, sorry. <laughs> I was in a completely wrong window. I'm so used to teams. So this is Frank van der Berg from Tastiel. Uh, so uh, yeah, Pavel, uh, thank you very much uh, for your presentation. Um, if I understood you well, huh, the examples that you showed so far, uh, they were really say, focused on measuring the gases which are supplied to the furnace. And we look at the readings in furnaces, but not yet really in situ. So we would really like to measure the composition, say, real time inside these readings in furnaces. Uh, and if I understood you well, well, this is planned for the future. Um, well, one of the issues there is, of course, that you will measure across a uh, length of about three meters, uh, which uh, furnace or even more. Uh, so it's a sort of integration that you will do in the integrated length, sort of average. Uh, are there also means to, well, uh, measure this, but then say position resolved, so along the length of your beam? Because again, usually with the DOAS techniques and the optical absorption spectroscopy, you will. Uh, yeah, uh, measure only along the length, but I can imagine if you use, for example, pulse lasers and very high, um, say, time resolved signals, you can even do this, uh, say, resolved over the length of your beam. Uh, what are your, what's your opinion on this? Uh, well, okay, uh, just to, 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 to maybe to answer the first part of the, the... The question, yes. Yeah, so, so we have, so the fuel measurements were done in situ actually in the in the, in the pipeline, and uh, I we also already used the, the, the technology for the hot rolling beams. So they actually were much longer than three meters, and then. Uh, but you're right. Uh, uh, that's you, the, the, what we are giving the customer is the integrated concentration over the path length, so the average, so to speak. But it, uh, it has proven to be already better than the point measurements, and at least what we have to receive from the from the customer. Yes, but of course, if you would like to have more special uh, resolution of, of the of the furnace, then of course you need to install more more sensors in some uh, very more complex geometry. That that's 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 clear. But as long as you have a homogeneous distribution, then uh, then it's not necessary. Yeah, but probably in practice with the burners, there is not never a homogeneous <laughs> situation in the in the furnace, I'm afraid. Um, but yes, uh, it's yeah, well, it's, it's something to think about. Also, well, in a more say fundamental perspective, I would say in the, in the development of the measurement technology. 
Yes, yes, that, that's 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 exactly the, the the idea. And of course, you know, we are, if you look back in the in, in the in the past, you know, where the people were using only the say extractive type of uh, probes. So basically, you were sampling the gas from one point only, and it was already used for for some sort of trials of closed loop control. Then then this integrated path lengths, assuming more or less laminar flow or homogeneous distribution, is already added value. But but of course, ideally. I mean, it would be much better to have something which also gives you a spatial distribution, yes. But then we need more sensors. Okay, thanks. Uh, Perfect. Thank you, Frank. Thank you for, for this uh, observation and questions for deeper in the technology that for sure Pavel will, be, will find interesting. <laughs> I so now I guess, work, yeah. uh, <laughs> thanks a lot. So now it's time to a bit uh, move on because uh, the time is unfortunately running. But uh, I, just to give you a bit of a the overlap now. So what Lampas can do now is something actually that is uh, I was talking beforehand that uh, about surface structuring and uh, uh, basically giving special um, characteristics to surfaces. This is done especially on uh, metal at the moment. So that's why uh, we want to see if maybe from the product of Inazio, we can already give some added value <laughs> to these surfaces to sell it to the to then their customers. But this to go to know a bit better about this, I'm really happy to give the floor now to Nikolai Schroeder from the Technical University of Dresden that will introduce also a bit LAMPAS in general and also go deeper a bit on uh, the monitoring system. So to see how we can help each other also back and forth. So you see right. multiple can help here, multiple and LAMPAS can help there and other way around. So the floor is yours, Nikolai. Nikolai. Thank you very much, Francesca. It's great to be back here on stage. Let's share my screen. I hope everybody can see it and hear me pretty yes, well. You can go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so yeah, today I'm going to present you a new approach for monitoring a DLIP process. And of course, giving a short overview about the LAMPAS project. Yeah, my name is Nikolai Schröder. I'm a research associate at the Technical University of Dresden. And as we can see in there is a laser pointer. As we can see in, in this map, uh, Dresden is located in the eastern part of Germany with this beautiful old town and a lot of their uh, faked rainbows in the sky. It is about a two right hours right away from Berlin. I'm also a member of the so-called CAMP team. CAMP stands for Center for Advanced Microphotonics. And it is a research collaboration between the Technical University of Dresden and the Fraunhofer IWS, which is also placed in Dresden. And what do, uh, are we doing there? I can say we can uh, we are doing everything concerning surface structuring by a laser, starting from the process, then going to the um, special designed application, and of course to the characterization of these surfaces. What is inspiring us? Let me say nature is inspiring us. On the left-hand side, we can see some examples of nature, uh, plant leaf, a butterfly, and the bug. I think everybody knows uh, how they look like in real life. But when we take a closer look to the surface of these um, objects, we can uh, see a pretty alien-like and far away from this world. world. Here, Maybe when we can go to the plant, I think everybody knows the lotus effect. And this lotus effect is caused by, uh, the, by the unique surface structure. In this case, it is pretty water repellent and self-cleaning. The butterfly has no color directly in, the, uh, in its wings. It has uh, a special line-like surface structure. And this is the reason why uh, it shines blue or black. And the bug has no chemicals on the skin. It has here a um, pillar-like structure. And the property of this structure is antibacterial. And now the camp can um, create directly these surfaces here with um, lasers on a lot of different materials. And we are doing this with some technologies. 
here are uh, will here I'm going to present you two of it. First of all, the direct laser writing. Here we have a laser beam which is deflected by a galvanometer scanner and is is brought uh, to the surface of the sample. Here we receive a resolution from five up to thirty microns and. Let me say it is slower microfabrication speed to the next technology I'm going to present you. And the energy distribution of the laser beam is here dot-like. Our main research area is the direct laser interference patterning. In this case, we have one laser beam coming into this DLIP optic. And in this optic, it is split into two sub beams. And in this case, with a Galvano scanner, it is uh, it is deflected directly here on the surface of the sample so that we can uh, achieve a so-called interference pattern on the surface. Here we receive some uh, feature sizes from 150 nanometers up to 30 microns, and it is much faster fabrication speed compared to the direct laser writing. So how many patterns in, uh, can we generate with this um, DLIP? Um, but that uh, experiments in this case we have here a line like pattern on the surface, but uh, there are thousands possible uh, patterns possible. Here it depends on the amount of sub beams and uh, on the type of polarization of these sub beams. And here are some examples of surface structure like flower likes or like a honeycomb. It depends on the application you would like to achieve and how we can produce it. Here we have two scenarios. Scenario one means we have a um, high, uh, low pulse energy and a high repetition rate from the laser. Therefore, we need a significant uh, amount of kilometers per second, and we receive a significant heat accumulation, which is not good for our material because it will be destroyed with it. Scenario two means we, the laser has a high pulse energy and a moderate rep plate. Here we can achieve high throughput with large uh, spot sizes, but unfortunately the feature size resolution is pretty low. So our solution to uh, make it better is the direct laser interference patterning. Here we have high pulse energy with moderate rep rates, and we are using the so-called interference patterning. Here we receive scanning speeds of some 100 uh, meter, uh, meters per second. We will uh, do this with a polygon scanner. We uh, receive lower heat accumulation and of course higher resolution due to the interference pattern. And this technology we are integrating into LAMPAS. It is a multi-beam high-speed processing. Here it is shown the six uh, sub-elements that uh, we will develop during this project. First of all, we need the interference patterning for high resolution beam processing. Uh, the polygon scanner will bring the laser uh, directly to the surface of the sample. And of course, we, we can't ablate or we can't generate a surface structure without any laser. That's, that's the reason why we are developing an ultra short pulse laser system. The inline monitoring system uh, ensures the quality uh, during the whole uh, laser structuring process. So this I will present you in the next slides. And in the end, we have to integrate these four submodels into a whole new machine. And of course, we have to validate this machine with some samples in the end. In this project, we are eight different project partners from all over Europe. So Trump is a huge laser a developer, they will do the laser developing and beam deflection system uh, will be done by NextScan and by uh, the Technical University where I belong to. The process monitoring system is done by NIT and also by the Technical University. The system integration, so the combination of all these sub modules uh, will be done by LASEA and of course uh, the validation a demonstration is done by Bosch and BSH. And of course, let's say for organizing uh, these events here, Epic is doing the dissemination of LAMPAS. Now we come to this unique inline monitoring system for, uh, for LAMPAS. Uh, in this case, we will 
uh, monitor two process effects. First of all, the accumulated heat that we would like, uh, that we don't want to have during the process. And of course, we would like to collate this with the topography assessment of the pattern structure. And we are realizing this with a combination of a high-speed infrared camera, uh, which is uh, done by NIT. And uh, what's also new, it is the second one that we are combining it. It is the fast Fourier transform system. So that's a unique um, measurement system for analyzing the topography of a periodic pattern. So what do we need for it? First of all, we need a laser pointer in a low power a laser with a low laser power, um, periodic structured area, and of course, a screen. Uh, we are using it here with a camera. So when that means when uh, the laser irradiation hits the, the area, it uh, the, the laser light is separated into like this into some clouds. We call this this uh, the fraction orders here. And depending on the quality of this laser structured areas, the intensity or the, 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 the behavior of this diffraction pattern will change. Let me show it how it works in real life. Here are some examples of structured stainless steel. Here we have uh, microscopy images of a good surface condition. Here you can clearly see the line-like pattern from the DLIP uh, treatment, and there is no significant resolidified material on top of it. Down, there is a bad surface condition with a uh, huge amount of uh, resolidified material on top of the line-like structure, structure. So in the end, it, uh, the, the, the pattern was or is destroyed. We monitored this uh, process with the infrared camera, and we can clearly see that there is a changing in the, in the temperature, depending on the surface quality. And of course, when we are doing this, uh, surface analyzation with the FFT system, we can also see that there is a change in the behavior of the diffraction orders. Here, when we have a good um, quality, like here we have on the left, on the top left side, we can see here the second plus minus second cloud. And this cloud we don't have here in the bad surface quality. So in the end, we have a powerful tool to defer um, good surface quality and a bad surface quality. What are the obje uh, objectives and benefits of LAMPAS? First of all, yes, we need, we are going to develop a high power ultra short pulse laser system with up to 1.5 kilowatt of laser power. With this, we are achieving high throughputs up to five square meters per minute. The resolution is depending on, on the, 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 the unique application. So with the monitoring system, we also achieve minimal workspace, uh, workpiece heating, and of course, advanced surface functions on large areas. So the objectives of, LAM of LAMPAS is of course development of a new generation of products. That means with different uh, special applications, a performance improvement of these products is also pretty important. And what's for the industry, uh, uh, also, is quite good that we have here a, an accelerated product development. And what's pretty important for the European Union is that uh, we are going to strengthen the global position of your Europe in the world. For uh, the ending of my uh, presentation, I would like to present you some applications that we are uh, that we generated at the university. Here is uh, the super hydrophobic properties. In, in the Petri dish, there is uh, water and, of course, a laser structured um, aluminum sheet. And you can clearly see that the laser structured area doesn't get wet. So the, the water has no chance to cover it in total. That's the application number one. The second application is for colorful finishes. Here is a picture of uh, my former colleague Stefan. Stefan was a, or is a pretty nice guy. And we put this picture here on a polymer foil, which you can see in this video. And when you flip it, you can see that the colors are going to change. And this depends on, on the angle of view. 
And here you can also see how incredible fast this laser structuring process is with a Galvano scanner. All right, we are now in the end. Thank you very much for your attention. And I think it's time for some questions. Francesca, yes, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, correct. Thanks a lot, Nicolai, for the introduction of LAMPAS and also more focused on the monitoring system. So now that we are here, of course, there are a lot of possible topics that we can touch because I know in this room now and maybe in the future also who will watch this video, there are end users of, of the uh, technology, especially from the steel um, uh, industry, but also we have people that are willing to maybe implement their cameras in new, in new devices and in new technologies. So let me pick the one that is a bit like the monitoring processing uh, one. So I, I go for that. Uh, we basically heard now that uh, multiple has its own uh, technology and you have, and of course, Lampas has its own. We have laser-based technology. It's nice to say that uh, we have the um, uh, gas analyzers, but also your, your uh, fast Fourier transform uh, technology is also laser-based. So that's uh, also yeah. nice to say. <laughs> but, and then we have the camera side. So we will hear later from Rodrigo. But then we heard also from Lampas, uh, from uh, multiple, that we have also uh, snapshot cameras uh, for hyperspectral imaging. And basically the connection is, we know that our cameras from multiple can also monitor uh, this kind of uh, really inline, this kind of, of uh, structuring um, processes. Do, what is your opinion there? So we work in SWIR. So that's uh, because the MIDIR, we know that Rodrigo is covering it. So <laughs> why not talking about SWIR uh, detection? And what is your thoughts? What are your thoughts, Nikolai, there? Yeah, that sounds pretty good. for. So we are looking also for uh, some, some new technologies in order to um, monitor this DLIP process. So there's a quite huge uh, range of of, of um, poss monitoring possibles that we don't know now, but I think there is uh, a new one now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So the, there is room. Now we don't have the partners in the room doing this, but uh, that's why we are here to get to know each other. So uh, that's uh, a good opportunity. We have Amen and IMEC uh, in, the, in the consortium that is uh, that are working on this. And so here in the room also, we have some uh, people uh, working on this. So definitely uh, we can uh, reach out later and see what is uh, that we can help you exactly with. And, uh, and so that is what Epic is doing as well. <laughs> so Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very good. Good. So now I guess I see a, a question from Thierry uh, in the chat, but let's say this is probably answered by Rodrigo directly. And now considering that this is Rodrigo time, <laughs> let's <laughs> leave the floor to him and then we come back to him in case he's not really answering um, uh, Thierry's question. Okay, Rodrigo, All right. Thanks. <laughs> thanks a lot, Nicolai, <laughs> and we move on to Rodrigo. Thanks a lot. The floor is yours, Rodrigo. Okay, I'll try to do my best, I promise. You will, you will, I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I guess now you can see my screen. Um, yes, and we hear you very well, so okay. you are ready to roll. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you, Francesca. So um, the presentation for today, uh, my presentation is uh, oriented to show uh, some solutions that we have developed for quality assurance and process control in industrial metal processing uh, applications, uh, mainly. Just a brief introduction about uh, our company. Okay, so uh, we are a new infrared technologies. We are a company that are based in, in Madrid, in Spain, and we develop and commercialize industrial solutions for mainly for real-time process monitoring and smart control of industrial uh, processes. We are a vertical integrated uh, company. We cover all the steps from the detector uh, concept to the final product, in in, including the manufacturing of our own detectors, the production of uh, industrial cameras, and uh, the introduction of machine vision industrial interfaces, and also uh, developing final solutions for integration into the production line, mainly for real-time and online uh, process monitoring and process control. As I said, these solutions are based in our self-produced uh, cameras. They have very specific, uh, very noticeable and specific uh, characteristics. They have detection in the in the mid IR covering the whole range from one to five microns. So they have a very broadband uh, detection. They have high speed capabilities and very important, they can operate at room temperature without the need of being uh, cooled. Uh, that's very important when you want to go into the production line because uh, our cameras don't need uh, maintenance. 
Now we are also introducing uh, thermal and cooled cameras, which will be sensitive in the in the long wave infrared band uh, from 8 to 14 microns, but these are not based in our own technology, of course. Uh, we don't produce a microvolumeter uh, sensors. So just a, a few lines about the solutions that are covered by our uh, products in these specific uh, applications in the industrial metal processing. Mm, we are mainly focused to uh, provide solutions for quality assurance of uh, laser-based uh, processes, not exclusively laser, but uh, very energetic uh, processes like uh, 3D printing uh, with indirect energy deposition uh, processes or laser welding. Uh, we have uh, combined uh, laser welding with real-time machine learning uh, processing also for defect detection in real time, uh, powder bed fusion or SLM processes. And, hardening and surface structuring uh, process monitoring and control, as is the case of, uh, of uh, LAMPAS. Uh, also other processes uh, like our welding or wire arc IT manufacturing process monitoring and control. Spectroscopy it has been one of the topics in uh, multiple in the previous presentations. Uh, we have customers that have developed a, a dual, dual combat spectro spectrometers uh, based in our high-speed cameras and uh, some other applications that you can see on the, on, on the right. Um, we have a strong collaboration with the industry through uh, H2020 uh, projects. Uh, of course, one of them is LAMPAS, but also others like Integrade or uh, Custodian. Our aim is to uh, put our technology in production line in many, uh, in many industries like the automotive, aerospace, steel, uh, among others, uh, for example. These are uh, some of uh, the products and solutions that we offer into the market. Of course, they are uh, targeted to integrators, uh, solution developers, and then end users. You can clearly see that we have a, a some on the upper left part, uh, some basic detectors like line detectors or single element uh, detectors. In the case of the linear arrays, uh, we have a few customers in the steel industry, industry uh, that are using our sensors for detection of defects or contaminants in the steel rods right after uh, production. That's one of the samples of our, um, of our products. But uh, I think our very uh, different uh, products are based in the imaging sensors. Uh, so we have right now our state of the art is a 128 by 128 pixel detector that we have integrated into a camera called Tachyon 16K uh, that allows to acquire uh, up to 4,000 frames uh, per second in uncooled uh, operation. As I said, this is uh, very important to introduce the camera into production line to monitor the, the process as we have seen from Nikolai, the presentation from Nikolai uh, before. We also have some, some solutions that are integrated uh, directly in the machine and they can do a process control, like for example, Klamith, I will show some examples now or monitoring uh, of the Melpool width, for example, that can be linked directly to the quality of the, of the process. And now, as I mentioned before, we are introducing a new line of thermal cameras uh, called the LIR320. Uh, this is a very compact, uh, very compact camera, a thermal camera with the characteristics or uh, performance characteristics totally different than the other cameras, but uh, very useful because it's a very compact system that can be put uh, easily into the, into the production uh, machine to monitor temperatures uh, for prevent uh, um, predictive maintenance and those kind of applications. Just uh, one example of our these solutions that I mentioned before is uh, Clamir. Clamir is an embedded system. We have integrated the infrared camera with a board to do image processing that extracts some features of the Melpool. In this case, this system is, that is uh, made for laser directed energy deposition uh, processes, uh, laser metal deposition as it's uh, known, in which uh, a powder is deposited uh, or is passing um, ejected through uh, the laser uh, and then a material is deposited to build a, a part. Okay, so as I said, we have Clamir that uh, combines the infrared camera, the image processing, uh, and, and the control electronics. And this is connected directly to a laser, uh, and it's capable to close the loop uh, and control the laser power during the complete process. Uh, in this case, we enhance the quality and the repeatability of the, of the process. It's a system that is very easy to integrate mechanically and very quick to configure. It's important, and it allows retrofit. Um, 
uh, meaning that it can be installed in machines that have already been built for this uh, application. As I said, the main applications of this camera is uh, the LMD and laser cladding, including the high-speed um, laser cladding, ELA. And where on the left, you can see the system uh, installed on the on the Triumph uh, laser optics. I will now give some a bit some more examples. So in the case of metal processing with this specific uh, process, the uh, laser metal uh, deposition, you can see some examples of what Clamid is capable uh, to do. In this process um, here, um, you can see that, um, let me see where the, here you can see um, what can happen when you build a, a one part without a, a process control, without taking care of the laser power. It can happen that uh, the part uh, overheats and, and the process uh, needs to be stopped because uh, in the end the part produces uh, doesn't comply with the quality asked uh, to the system. Um, this happens because of an excess of power. And what Clamir does is precisely to uh, control that laser power and enhance the production, the productivity, because then the part can be produced um, without interruption. Um, this uh, reduces the rate of defective uh, parts, uh, material use and energy done in a controlled uh, process. And in this case, the process is um, optimized and also the productivity. Here you can see an example of a massive uh, metal part built with, uh, with Clamir. Uh, process uh, control without interruption the whole process and here you can see what Clamid is doing actually it's uh, monitoring the melt pool uh, in real time and with this uh, monitoring it determines the it measures the melt pool width and uses this uh, reference value in order to control the laser the laser power here you can see the blue line how the laser power is being controlled in in real time this um, you can see um, here in this uh, video you can see exactly what Clamid is doing. Uh, you can see here that a, a triangular shape a part a tube is being built uh, using this uh, technique. And uh, with, uh, without control, you can see that there is an excess of power up here and there is accumulation of material on the corners. And actually you can see that the quality of the, of the, of the finished part is very, uh, very different, very rough compared to a part built with a process control with Clamid. Okay, I can show. Um, let's see, now here you can see in the in the video you can see. Uh, hopefully, you can see how Clamid is acting on the laser power in order to let uh, to produce the part uh, continuously uh, without uh, defects. Okay, here you can see on the on the edges that the the part is, doesn't have good quality, but. Um, with uh, Clamir, the quality is uh, very high quality is uh, achieved. Also, uh, in the same kind of process, uh, but uh, in order to uh, another process is called laser cladding. Another laser directed energy deposition process is called laser cladding. This is a, a continuous uh, process that is uh, used to apply a metal layer uh, on substrates in order to solve a possible worn out or, or prevent corrosion to apply another metal layer in order to change the properties of, uh, of the original of the base uh, material. This is done also by uh, depositing the, uh, the powder uh, through the, with, the, with the laser. And in the case of, and in this case, it can happen that an excess of power can damage permanently the substrate material. Here is what we can see it on the on the right side here, clearly. In the case of uh, Clamid, what it does is control the laser power in order to avoid this and allow uh, continuous uh, processing uh, without uh, interruption and without uh, damaging the, the base uh, material. So in the case of Clamid, we have a process monitoring and process control then we have another system called I3MS, which allows only a process monitoring for a metal 3D printing or for a laser welding. It's a system that can detect if there is a variation, a large variation in the in the melt pool width, which is linked to the quality of the of the of the process at the end. So the system can detect if there are these variations and and give an indication of the quality to the to the to the user. Okay, and then uh, we have the the high speed uh, camera. This is the camera that is being used in in Lampas uh, project. 
it's a camera, as I said, that can achieve a maximum frame rate of 4,000 frames per second, but it allows also to go at higher speeds. Um, one of the advantages of our technology is also that uh, as it has detection between one and five microns, it allows uh, coaxial or on-axis uh, observation through the laser optics. Uh, for laser processes, this is actually very, very important. And actually, you can see here a video of a mel pool, uh, the mel pool uh, variation in a PBF uh, process. Here we have an axis observation. You can see that the mel pool is always uh, in the center of the image. With this data, also it's possible to calculate the cooling rate uh, based in this uh, thermal uh, information, which um, can uh, be used to uh, determine if there have been defects uh, during the, the position. Okay. Uh, so um, this was my presentation. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to give you, uh, to give uh, the attendants just an overview of our solutions that can be used for uh, process monitoring and for process control with, uh, in the case of steel uh, or metal uh, processing applications. Thanks a lot, Rodrigo. That was really uh, covering a lot of applications. So, all, of course, additive manufacturing is something that uh, we know that NIT is really strongly interested in and, and, and devoted to. Also, um, laser beam welding, of course, that's your, your spe specialties. Now, I would go back to first to see if Thierry is happy, because if Thierry is not happy, we cannot go on. <laughs> so, he was asking you to uh, exactly define what are the, uh, that is exactly measured by the camera and, it, it, and how, how it is in implemented in process control. Correct, Thierry? Do you want to add something now that you saw the, the, the talk? Yes, it's uh, perfectly clear. So okay. <laughs> it was, uh, yes, I didn't notice that uh, Rodrigo was to speak after, and, but uh, yes, he answered the question basically, uh, and uh, I learned a lot of things. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Thierry. So then it was worth to wait. <laughs> <laughs> then I have to say, um, uh, let's say there is one point that we hear often. So a question a bit more to Rodrigo. I guess this is not the, um, the, the maybe the issue now for Lampas, but is in general what we hear uh, more often that basically some applications more towards um, uh, additive manufacturing would like to have more frame per second. Is it something that is actually uh, hassling you? Uh, are you thinking? about it what is the approach of NIT on this in the case of uh, I think in the case of uh, Clamir uh, we are operating at one kilohertz and we are fine with it it works really well and as I said it's compatible with high-speed uh, laser cladding uh, process um, even at one uh, kilohertz uh, for some more demanding um, uh, applications like uh, PBF and the mm -hmm. sample that I showed in the last slide it's necessary to how to go at higher speed. In our case, with the camera at full frame rate, we can achieve uh, 4,000 frames per second in a snapshot acquisition, meaning that we can acquire all the pixels at the same time, and this is also an advantage. But in case that it's needed to go faster, we can window a little bit the, the acquisition. I mean, we can uh, make it narrow um, the acquisition window, and that improves the, the speed. Uh, I would say that um, Infrared, uh, mid IR, high speed, and cooled. Uh, those are the characteristics of our cameras. And at the moment, there are no other technologies that uh, can achieve that. Nevertheless, uh, we always have it in mind for the future developments that uh, we have a reference in the market of high speed. So even if we go to uh, higher resolutions uh, in the next generations, we will have to keep um, the high speed capabilities uh, because that, will mean, that means that we will open our uh, sensors to other uh, applications and also give support to the existing uh, customers. This is something that we have in mind, but uh, at the moment uh, with, that, with this camera in 32 by 32, we can achieve uh, 10 kilohertz. 32 by 32 means that, uh, I mean, it's maybe not high resolution. I mean, it's very, it's probably a small resolution. You have to uh, trade off. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but uh, when you look at data at 10 kilohertz, uh, this is like an HD signal. And it's a lot of data that you need to analyze in real time. Because the idea is also to have a real time process uh, monitoring and process uh, control. Exactly. And in the end, there is a computing system that needs to get all that data and analyze it in real time. So. 
that's also a, a challenge. A challenge, yeah, yeah, of course. So that is also what is needed by by uh, companies like yours, or also like from uh, multiple as well. If we want to really also address this kind of uh, processes, that you have always to see what is the trade-off and where is the, the the position where we can take off maybe some uh, characteristics to increase the other one, uh, but still we want to be in line monitoring. And so uh, also we don't we don't want to cool them. So there are a lot of things that uh, have to be balanced and maybe speaking uh, not on, on a custom made level but maybe on a category level you can already address the needs of some applications in a, in a broader way and then go into deeper into into the demands of the customer so that's mm. definitely good flexibility from your side so very good thanks a lot Rodrigo so now I would say if there are no questions more I have to wrap up a bit and uh, maybe say uh, what is the future of these two projects because uh, Epic is here also not only to, to let you know about them and talk to the actors of, of this uh, project, but is also there to exploit them. So we want them to be successful. And so as you heard from the beginning, uh, we expect from uh, multiple now, especially for the monitoring process systems, already the first results from Inazio in September. So it's really, we are really close uh, to get some uh, hints on how this is working now, the monitoring system there. So we will keep in touch. We will make a, a, an announcement when we are allowed to announce the results. So uh, I just say, stay tuned there because uh, that is what uh, we wanted to show and then we will have another uh, one and a half years uh, to to think about how to apply this how to optimize it and also maybe bring it to towards other companies that are sitting here or at the moment or they will uh, listen to this uh, and watch this uh, webinar later so uh, we are there we are coming so please uh, pay attention to our uh, press releases and announcements and um, from the uh, lampa side we are always also there looking for uh, results because we want to extract the most possible. And the sooner as we have also the validation uh, of, of this um, uh, surface structuring, we are looking as well for customers or for uh, anyway, first um, uh, end users that would like to test their surfaces so that we can basically, as a service, structure them and then see if the um, uh, qualities or the, the, the properties that we are giving to you are actually satisfying your demands. So the idea is now in the upcoming months to also validate. So we are in the validation process there as well. So once we have um, the, the certainty that our machine can do something for you, we will also announce this and we are you are very welcome to um, just reach out to us. And I mean, in case you didn't yeah, check earlier, this is uh, still my email address. So you can see it here, <laughs> here below. So anything that is interesting for you that you heard today or that you know that will be interesting for you very soon when we have validated all the technologies, because as we said, it's really a matter of months. Please feel free to reach out to me and we can put you in contact with all the partners also for tailored services, but also for the entire project aims to bring you really close to what these two projects are doing. And so now I would say, Let's close this uh, uh, public uh, event now, and I would say bye bye to everybody. And uh, let's uh, yeah keep in touch because uh, there are a lot of developments going on, and uh, you will hear from us very soon. Bye bye. <laughs>